So, you're new to Godot and you want to learn about collision layers and masks, but you take one look at Godot's layer system and you decide it's time to start learning Unity instead. Well, before you do that, watch this video because in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how collision layers and masks work in Godot. So first, let's establish a baseline. I've got a world with a ball and a cube floating above a purple platform. And when I run the game, this happens. Every object in the game bumps into and interacts with each other. But sometimes you'll want to be able to control which objects can interact with each other and which objects cannot. That's where collision layers and masks come into play. When you select an object in your game, you will be able to see its collision layers and masks on the right under the collision tab. And if you take a closer look at each individual cell, you'll see that they each have a unique name. In this case, layer one, layer two, layer three, etc. This can get pretty confusing. So for this tutorial, let's change the names of some of these layers to something more useful. To do this, go into Project and Project Settings and in the General tab, scroll down until you come to a section called Layer Names. Here, you'll see things like 2D Render, 3D Render, and 3D Physics. In this tutorial, we're only concerned with 3D Physics. So click on that and on the right, you'll see a list of all the layers available to you. Here, you can give each layer a unique name. In this case, Layer 1 will be called Floor, Layer 2 will be called Box, and Layer 3 will be called Ball to represent the three objects we have in our game world. Once you you're done, press close and you'll return to the main editor. Now, if you take a look at the individual layer cells, you'll see that their names have been changed to the names you've given them. But what do these layers do? Well, I like to think of layers like categories. For example, if your game has a bicycle, a car, and an airplane in it, you could put all three of those objects into a layer called vehicles. Or if you have a bunch of different characters in your game, you can specify which ones are enemies by putting them in an enemy layer, and which ones are allies by putting them in an ally layer. In this example, we're going to keep it simple. Our floor object will be put into the floor layer, our box will be put into the box layer, and our ball will be put into the ball layer. So now all of our objects are neatly organized in their own layers and we can start learning about masks. So for now, let's only focus on the ball object. If you look at the ball's mask cells, you'll notice that they also have the same names as the cells in the layer section. That's because masks allow you to choose which layers your selected object is able to interact with. So in this example, our ball object has the floor layer selected, meaning it's able to interact and collide with objects in the floor layer, which in this case is just the floor. But watch what happens when we disable the floor mask and run the game. The ball falls through the floor because it's no longer able to interact with the floor layer. If we go back and re-enable the floor mask, then when you run the game, the ball collides with the floor again. Now, let's bring the box back into the picture. Let's say we want to make the box collide with the ball object, but pass through the floor. All you have to do is enable the ball mask and disable the floor mask. And when you run the game, the box bounces off the ball and then passes through the floor. But that's not all you can do. For example, I could choose not to put my ball object in any layer at all, but keep its collision masks enabled, meaning nothing will be able to interact with it, but it will still interact with other objects. So when you run the game, the box will pass through the ball and the floor, but the ball itself will still collide with the floor. And that's just a few examples of what you can do with collision layers and masks. You might be able to get away with not using layers and masks in very simple games, but you'll find that as your games become more complex, they become essential for keeping things organized and working properly. Anyways, that's all for this tutorial. Come join our Discord server, and if you like the video, like it, subscribe it, share it, bell it, and comment it. Thank you, have a nice day.